Hi, I'm Shel from Pangolin Photo Safaris, and today I'm here in Chobe National Park on the Chobe River, and one of the locations we are at is Kualizi. We know it as Elephant Bay, and if you look right behind me, a few buffaloes. Just look how beautiful is that. So in this video, I would like to discuss with you a few common mistakes that I see people make on safari. I will discuss this few mistakes and how to avoid them. Okay, so my mistake number one is one that I actually made just very recently. A very bad rookie mistake and I've shot in JPEG and actually by accident somehow I must have touched my screen touch screen and changed the RAW into JPEG luckily to me the exposure was spot on it was perfect so I could retrain the shadows and the highlights there was not much that I lost. So that was luckily on my side. But I've seen so many times people choose to shoot JPEG. I've made these mistakes years back and also shoot a lot on JPEG. And the reason for me was, was about space. Um, I wanted to save space. I thought I don't need raw. The camera's doing a good enough job. Today, I regret that. I'm looking back at a lot of my other photos, my older photos, and I wish I had shoot RAW so that I could edit it so much better. Your dynamic range in your pictures is so much wider. Your shadows, you can pull your shadows so much better. Your highlights. If you by accidentally overexpose or underexpose too much in your image, you shooting RAW, you can retrieve that. But if you're shooting in JPEG, that is very difficult. Your camera is compressing that file so that it will be difficult for you to save that image. So I highly recommend that you shoot raw. Even if you just somebody that just started photography and you're just not sure what to do, I would recommend shooting raw. Shoot raw and JPEG. So later stadium, if you think you this is not for you, you can always erase the raw file. But if you decide that later, damn man, this is what I want to do and I love it, you have that raw file. So you can later then when your editing starts to get better and you understand your editing program, you can then use these images and you can then edit them so much better. Shoot raw. Okay, so my second point or mistake that I want to discuss that I often see is people shoot on full auto, automatic. Come on camera, switch on full auto and they shoot fire away. The problem with this is you have absolutely no control what your camera decides what it wants to do. Your camera doesn't know you want to take a picture of that bird in flight or uh, elephant comes and drink water. It doesn't know what shutter speed you need or what depth of field you need. So if you put your camera on auto, you have no control what the camera is deciding. So if your camera is doing a reading and it's overexposed or underexposed, you don't know, the camera doesn't know that. So it is important to try and learn yourself at least one of the auto exposure settings. Either aperture priority, shutter speed priority, or even manual with photo ISO. And then something that you can use with that that will make a big difference in your photography is using exposure compensation. So either if you're shooting aperture priority or shutter speed priority, you may have control of your shutter speed or your depth of field. At least if your camera is reading your picture and it's a little bit overexposed or underexposed, you can still use exposure compensation and tell your camera, you know what, add me a little bit of light or take a little bit of light away. So please and try and shoot in one of those modes. 
Look at the beautiful elephants right behind me. And, and this is why we actually call this place Elephant Bay. It's a very popular place for elephants to come down and have a drink of water. So the next thing I've noticed, the people are too afraid to crank up their ISOs. If your ISO is too low, it's probably going to be often happen that your shutter speed is too slow as well. Now in wildlife photography, it's extremely crucial to have fast shutter speeds. For example, here behind me, I've seen the elephants drinking. Now if they lift up their trunk, they're putting the water in their mouth, the driplet is falling, you need a fast shutter speed to freeze that. The water droplets will fall and if you want them crisp and clear, you need a shutter speed around two and a half thousand. So to have that fast shutter speed, you're probably going to have to push up your eyes up. If you're going to keep your eyes at all time around 100 and 400 during the whole day, you're not going to have that fast shutter speed. Maybe in the middle of the day when you have a lot of sun, you will have that. But in the most beautiful time of the day, that early morning light, late afternoon, you can't shoot with those low ISOs. Your shutter speed will be too slow. If you have birds in flight or action is happening, for example, here in the water, hippos are fighting or playing, there's a lot of action movement. If you want to freeze those moments, you need a fast shutter speed. And to have a fast shutter speed, in most cases, you're going to have to put up your eyes. So don't be afraid to put up your eyes. The cameras of these days, all the sensors are quite good. The technology is there, you can easily shoot with 1000 to 2000 ISOs. Should not be any problem, any camera, mirrorless, DSLRs, they are all really good and they should be able to handle those. It's so much easier to work on a noisy image and do noise reduction than to have an image that's not sharp just because your eyes are too low and you have movement in your image or a blurry image, motion blur in your image. So another point is composition. So often I look at people's photos on safari and I realize how often we make mistakes with composition. And I think the easiest is always to put your subject in the middle. But what I see people do is, there will be, for example, a line, and they will take 20, 30, 40 photos of that line, exactly all the same 40 photos line in the middle of the frame. So, <laughs> with composition, I guess it's, it's, there's a lot of rules where you can do and the ways of doing it. But the easiest way for you just to change your framing a little bit is put that line maybe a little bit on the left. Use rules of thirds, a little bit on the left, a little bit on the right. Play with your rise, put a little bit third on the top, third on the bottom. Also, when you take your pictures, I've seen so often People take a beautiful photo of, a, of, a, of an elephant, drinking water for example, and they cut off the legs. You have all these spaces on top of the sky, elephant, beautifully focused on the eye, nicely done, but then they cut off the legs. All with a bird, the daughter is sitting on a branch, focusing on the eye, the beak, beautifully, and then they cut off the tail. So use a little bit of the rules of thirds, move that focus point of yours to the left, to the right, bottom or to the top so that you don't put your subject the whole time in the center of your frame. So one mistake that's cost me a few shots in the past is forgetting to put your settings back to default. How often have it happened that you've been at a sighting, you've set your camera to a specific setting, you finish with that sighting, you move on, you come to the next sighting, you pick up your camera, you start shooting, and it was completely wrong. The focus point was the wrong area, you were still underexposed by three or four stops, your shutter speed was not fast enough, and you destroyed your image. I have done it a few times and I've seen it so often happen that people forget to do that. So I recommend 
that you try make a habit of, of it after your sighting or where you've been shooting before you put down your camera look at your settings maybe do a default setting i would recommend an action setting that i like to use with my camera on two and a half thousand shutter speed if i put my exposure compensation around zero or minus a third so if something suddenly happen i can pick up my camera and shoot and i know i will be quite accurate or i'll have enough good enough setting to be able to capture this action or photo that i want so this is the most common mistakes that i've observed um, if you have any mistakes that you've recently made or still making please leave it in the comments down below um, don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel by pressing the bell button and hope to see you soon